Hi there and welcome to another Spacey video. In this one we're going to take a look at two things. We're going to quickly cover Spacey pipelines and we're also going to take a look at named entity recognition in the Spacey library. So let's get started. We've got an import here and I'm loading up the English small language model and we get back the object there. Uh, the article we're going to look at in this video is um, this particular one here. We're going to look at this article about climate change and, and whether or not we should be burning coal. And we're going to grab the text from that, and I've already done that, it's all here. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to get named entities out of that later on. But first of all, let's cover processing pipelines in Spacey. When you call um, NLP on a piece of text, um, what happens is the text is tokenized. It's split into tokens or words. You can think of them as similar to words and that produces a doc object. That doc is then processed in different steps sequentially. That's the processing pipeline in Spacey. So if I open up the documentation, you can see that um, there are different components within a pipeline. The tokenizer is the core component that segments the text into words or different tokens. You optionally have a bunch of other ones here, the tagger which will give you part of speech tags such as whether or not a word is a verb or a pronoun or whatever, a parser which will link together the dependencies between one word and the other words in the text and you also have this NER component, the entity recognizer. That's the component that we're going to look at in this video. It's used for named entity recognition in Spacey. Now let's get started. We can take a look at the pipeline uh, of the NLP object by looking at the pipeline property. And in this given pipeline, we see that in addition to the tokenizer, we've got the part of speech tagger, we've got the dependency parser, and we have a named entity recognition component in that pipeline as well. So what I want to do now is um, get the, use the text we've got up here and I want to tokenize that and, and run the text through this particular pipeline. So I'm going to do that just now. We're going to get a document object by calling the NLP constructor on that text. And that gives us back the document. You can see the text here, but it is of the type of a spacey document. And what we can do with that is that we can inspect the documentation here we can see that the tagger adds a tag to the document to each um, to each token so we can then see what um, particular part of speech the token is so if we look at them um, let's say the, the second token here the word meeting the part of speech tagger will add the dot tag property and we can then see that we get just this random number which is a bit confusing but actually it's mapped to a part of speech and we can see that the word meeting is denote, denoted as a verb by the part of speech tagger so that's what the part of speech tagger does it gives you the an estimation at least according to the the machine learning model in the background what does it think that the part of speech is for the given word so I'm just going to copy a piece of code I've got here um, it's commented out but so for the first 10 tokens in the document, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the token itself, what is the text, and we're going to look at the tag um, with the underscore there, which will give us the part of speech. And if I look at it like that, it'll give us the more user-friendly way to look at that. So the world leaders, we have two nouns, then we meeting, which is a verb. And this is giving you the estimations of the part of speech there. We'll cover part of speech more in a future video. Um, I want to now cover the second part of this, the departure, very quickly. That just links words together and, and uses dependency labels. To see that a bit better, we can look at the head, which is the that's the attribute that's added to a token. Um, and what that does is, you can see for each word, it has a link to what you can think of as its parent word. There's actually a better way to view these dependencies um, within words in the text. We can use something called Displacey, and I'm going to copy the code that I've prepared for this um, and just paste it in, we'll comment that out, um, and we'll uncomment this. So Spacey has this tool called Displacey, um, and that can be used to show you the dependencies between words in a particular text. So we're going to look at the first 11, uh, the first 11 tokens within the document. 
and we're going to look at the dependencies between those tokens. So if I do that and execute that, we get this graphical representation of each word um, and the, the first 11 tokens. The word world is a noun. You also get the noun, whether it's a verb, pronoun, whatever it may be, proper noun. And you get the, this kind of graph that's built up. It's a dependency graph where one word points into the word that is essentially its parent. And that's a quite a useful way to, to have a look at the text and to have a look at the dependencies in the text. So that's Displacy. Um, I would like to cover that in more detail in a future video if there's any interest in that. Um, but that's enough about dependency parsing. This isn't a video on that. Um, but it is showing you that these components within the, the Spacey NLP pipeline, they all play a very important role in taking the raw text and producing something that is meaningful from a NLP perspective. So now finally I want to cover um, named entity recognition. So let's go down here and what I'm going to say is, well, let's go to the documentation. The NER component adds a few things to the, you know, the spacey document object and also to the, each individual token. To the document object itself, it gives you the .ents property, which gives a list of the named entities that is found within the document. And also to each token, we have a couple of properties, ent underscore IOB, which we'll discuss a bit later, and also ent type. So each token may belong to an entity or it may not be. And these attributes of the token object will tell you whether or not it's part of a named entity. So let's go and dig into that a little bit. So we've got doc.ents, that's added. And these are some of the named entities that have been found by the named entity recognition component. We've got places in the world, like Cornwall. We've got G7, which is an organization. We've got people like David Attenborough, uh, entities like the White House. We also have uh, ordinals like first. We have all sorts of places, countries, and dates as well. So we can inspect that a little bit further. Um, we can actually loop over these and we'll say for entity and dot, dot ents. We can print the entity's text, which we've got there, but we can also print its label. This is a another property, label underscore. And that'll give you the, the actual entity label for that given entity. Cornwall is a GPE, which means it's a geopolitical entity. According to the, according to the parser, um, also G seven geopolitical entity. We've got David Attenborough, a person, and we have organisations. Well, the White House kind of is an organisation, I suppose. Up to two billion. It even finds these sort of money related terms, and also different types of dates such as years and months, um, all sorts of things. But we have a lot of different entities in this text. Um, what I can do is I can actually render these using Displacy. Um, Displacy, remember, is this tool here. Now, when we used that above, we were visualizing dependencies between one word and, and its parent word, um, the dependency graph that's formed here. We can actually visualize the entities. We just need to pass style equals ent instead. And that gives us this graphical representation where the entities are highlighted along with the entity label itself. So that's very useful if you want to have a more visual representation of what are my entities, where are they in my text. Um, so moving on from that, um, I'm going to look at this particular block here. What is the IOB scheme? Now, this is something that um, is part of named entity um, academia, I suppose. IOB will tell you for each individual token within a document, is it a part of an entity or not? And in if it is part of an entity, does it come at the start of an entity or is it something that's just within an entity? So let's dig into what that means more. If we have an entity called Jeff Bezos, that's a person. Jeff um, is the first token within that entity. That ha so that has an IOB token of B because it begins an entity. Then we have Bezos, that's also part of a named entity but it's inside, it's not the beginning token, it's inside the entity, so it gets the IOB token of I. And finally, any word that is not part of a named entity is given the token O for outside the entity, essentially, outside of an entity. So this works at a token level in Spacey. Um, I can look at each token in a text. If 
put each token in a document. I'll just call it token. And what I can do is I can say um, you can print the entity dot uh, print the token dot entity iob, and I'll just um, print all of those out. And you can see that the majority of the tokens within our document are not part of entities. They have the zero, which means they're outside of an entity. However, um, what I can do is I can do an if statement. I can say if the token dot ent iob um, if that's in, let's say use the in operator. If it's b, which means it's the beginning of a token, or if it's i, which means it's inside a token. If that's true, then we will print. Oh, my apologies. If it's true, we'll print the token. So that's another way of at the token level, rather than looking at doc dot ents. At the token level, what we're doing is we're inspecting a token attribute ent underscore iob underscore. We check whether it's at the beginning of a token or if it's inside the token and we print it. Okay, so that's another way of looking at tokens. Um, so finally, I'd just like to show you how we can enumerate. I'm just going to copy this out. How can we enumerate the different types of entities within a text? So to do this, I'm going to copy a bit of code. So the, the question here is how many of each entity type are mentioned in this text? So I'm going to instantiate a counter instance and I'm going to pass to it a list and it's going to be the entity label for each entity in doc.ents. So doc.ents, remember, will give you a list of entities. For each one of them, we will extract the label, um, which means is it a geopolitical entity? Is it a person? Is it an organisation? Is it a money or is it a date? Any kind of thing like that. And we want to count them up within the text. And if we do that, we will get back a counter, which counts up how many we find in the text. We can see that there's four cardinal entities. There's two day entities. We've got 11 geopolitical entities. Remember, it's a G7 meeting, so there's lots of countries involved, lots of entities on a geopolitical um, domain. And yeah, so that's us using the counter object to count up how many of each type of entity we've got within that one particular BBC document. And this can be used with any any particular document you can imagine. It can be used within a, a for a novel. You want to count the entities within a novel. Anything you want, um, it can be used like that. So that's going to wrap up this video. Um, the important takeaways from the perspective of named entity recognition. Spacey has this component pipeline with a named entity component that's optional. You can turn it off if you're not interested in named entity recognition. If you are interested though, keep it in there and then you get access to the doc.ents property, which is here. Sorry, I'm trying to scroll around here. Um, it's quite a long uh, notebook. But yeah, you get access to doc.ents and that gives you all the named entities that it's found within the text. And finally, on a token level, if you're iterating over tokens, you can also find out whether or not a token is a named entity. And if it is a named entity, is it at the beginning of the entity or is it inside the entity? Um, so you can do all that with Spacey. You can combine it with Python's counter and, and any, any other tools in the language in order to do really cool things in named entity recognition. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day. If you've liked the video, please subscribe and I'll see you again next time.